Hey what's up coders welcome to one little coder today we are going to learn how to upscale your stable diffusion image but rather than using existing upscaler this is an entirely new upscaler a completely new concept for example if you have got an image like this 512 by 512 like this you can upscale it to really high resolution like the HD 1024 image now how can you do that how does this upscaler work that's exactly what we are going to see in this video First I would like to show you the upscaler and I would like to show you basic information about the upscaler then we'll jump into the Google Colab notebook where we will actually have hands on upscaling now the first thing is this is an upscaler that has been released by stability ai team and they call it latent upscaler there is a reason why they call it latent upscaler it's because this upscaler is not going to work based on the output image most upscalers that we currently have works after the image is generated but this upscaler works in the latent space so what has happened here is that stable diffusion team has trained a new model with high resolution image so using the high resolution subset of lion dataset they have trained a high resolution model now that model and the existing stable diffusion or any stable diffusion model work on the same latent space so that means because they share the same latent space now you can take the latent so for example if you see this image if you see the flow chart you can take the latents from your existing latent space that is generated from the prompt that you gave for stable diffusion you can take those latents send it to the upscaling diffusion model now you get the upscaled latents now you can use that using your vae or decoder and then get the upscaled image so rather than generating an image and then trying to upscale it it works at the latent level and that's exactly why they are calling it a latent upscaler and when we jump into the code you can actually see the same thing happening and this is what exactly they have given in the description as well that one you can generate latents using stable diffusion pass it on the upscaler and then decode it or the other thing is if you have already got an image first you need to encode the image using your whatever that you are using to encode it the model and from that you send it to the upscaler and then decode it let me jump into the code that will make it easier for you this model is already available on hugging face model hub which means it also supports diffusers library so i've put together a google collab notebook for you to easily use i'm going to take you through cell by cell of the google collab notebook but i'll also explain how this upscaling happens when it when we reach there another important thing about this model is it does not only work on the base stable diffusion model but you can use this with any stable diffusion model for example you can see that i'm using it with one of the most favorite models of mine which is analog diffusion model now let's first start with the basic requirement of this you have to install diffusers then install transformers accelerate scipy safe tensors after you have installed all these things even much before that sorry i missed it like first make sure that you have got a gpu runtime click runtime click change runtime and select gpu I'm going to link this notebook in the YouTube description which means you can directly click the Google Colab notebook and get started. Once you have installed all the required libraries, the next thing that you need to import is from diffusers you need to import stable diffusion latent upscale pipeline and the default stable diffusion pipeline that you would be using to generate an image. Then you have got torch imported. Then the next thing is you need to download the model that you are going to use to create the latents. So in my case I've used analog diffusion but you can use any stable diffusion model. Now import from pre-trained from the stable diffusion pipeline from pre-trained you import the analog diffusion model with the data type torch float 16 and move the model to CUDA. Once you have done that now it's time for us to download the upscaler. So like I said this is a dedicated model in itself. It's a latent upscaler model so you need to download the model from the model hub link that we just were looking at. so from stable diffusion latent upscale pipeline from pretrain you download the model the same thing but instead of downloading it as a model you are going to download it as an upscaler now move the upscaler to cuda as well now you have got the model in place then you have got the upscaler in place now create a prompt and if you want have a seed and then use the pipeline which is the model to create an image so i've got i've gone ahead with very basic information very basic uh, setup so i've got the prompt i've got the generator and we have to specify that the output that we want is a latent not the image in itself 
then we are going to say that the number of steps should be 30 and then the guidance scale 5 you can change whatever you would like to you can even try with 7 if you want and dot images and then that gets stored in the lower is latents now this lower is latents is good enough for us to send it to a VAE an auto encoder like an encoder and like de decoder technically we are going to decode it and you can decode it like if you just want a low res image but because we want a high resolution image what we are going to do is we are going to take this low res latents as you can see here and then we are passing it on to the upscaler which is what we already downloaded before so you can see the upscaler that we downloaded we are going to use this low res latent send it to the upscaler with the same prompt and you know basically whatever steps that you want to give I'll give 30 and now you're going to use this and then create a new image which is an upscaled image now simply like any decoding that you would do with stable diffusion image you're going to use pipeline.decode latents send the low res latents and you save the low resolution image and you, have, you can you save the upscaled image which we have already got we have got the upscaled image and here you can see that we are not outputting the latents, we are outputting the image in itself. That's why uh, you can directly save the image. So we have got two images saved. Let me run it for you so that you can see. So I've got analog style at night at a campsite under the stars. Okay. Let me run the prompt, saved it. Let me run the pipeline, which is going to generate the image. It's going to take like six or seven seconds if you've got a T4 machine took about seven eight or oh, seven okay now send these latents to the upscaler and then upscale these latents the same latent space and that is done in a couple of seconds that's that's another beauty about this upscaler which is quite fast so if you know upscalers like um, ESR GAN a lot of these upscalers are quite uh, slow uh, because you know that's how they work by creating subset of the image and then trying to upscale it this is really fast now save the Decode the low res image and save it. Now save the up, uh, upscaled image. Now I'm going to display the low res image first. Let's see what happens. This is basically I'm displaying using. Yep. Yeah. This is my low res image. And I'm going to down, um, display the upscale, upscaled image, which is the high resolution image. As you can see, this is, uh, this is uh, loaded using IPython display. So the low res image, you can see how much screen space it has occupied. And when the high resolution image gets loaded, you can in fact like download it also. You can download it and then see uh, the actual size. But when I'm displaying it here, you can actually see the amount of details that you have got, the resolution that you have got, the screen size, the space that it has occupied. And you can see how high resolution it is. And you can try this with different prompts. Like for example, analog diffusion is really good at a lot of things. And one of the things is like uh, it can do human portraits really well like something that I've tried a lot so I can say analog style close-up photo portrait of a young Chinese girl one thing is like I'm not giving any negative prompt maybe the face is not going to be good so I'm sorry if you're going to get any nightmare from the zombies that I'm going to create but uh, just simply just for a demo purpose this is your invoke command and this is the prompt that I've given and like I said, this works with any stable diffusion model. It doesn't have to be only the base stable diffusion model or the pre-trained stable diffusion model that the stable diffusion team or stability AI team released. But any fine-tuned model, most likely, uh, because I'm using analog diffusion, it is working fine. Most likely, any stable diffusion model, you can use this upscaler with. That's another good thing here. So what we have done is quickly to show you the steps. We created the prompt, created lowest light latents, sent those latents to upscale it after the upscaler that we have and from that the lowest latents we have decoded it and saved the image the highest latents which got converted into image here itself we are saving that and then displaying the lowest one this is the low resolution one and let me display i should have displayed the high resolution one so you can see okay this is an image again negative prompts always make this images good that's one of the things that I'm not doing right now, just because I don't want to focus on the prompt in itself. I want to primarily focus on the upscaler and uh, how fast the upscaler is like. If you have noticed when we try to do upscaling, it just took about five seconds. The image 
generation took seven seconds upscaling took five seconds so in literally like 12 seconds you have like a really good resolution and you can see the high resolution image how it looks it's really good and if you want you can save it do whatever you want but this is how easy it is for you to get a high resolution image using the latest stable diffusion latent upscaler like i said it doesn't work after the image is generated rather it works at the latent space and that is going to make this extremely popular because uh, because this is an entirely new way of upscaling unlike your typical upscaler which works with the image so i'm really excited to see what kind of things people are going to build on top of it you can see the details here you can see the author uh, the developer and all the details here um, and i'll link the youtube i'll link the google collab notebook also in the youtube description definitely check it out let me know your thoughts about this new upscaler and if you if you put it to work let me know how you felt about this upscaler and is the upscaling really good like if you have been using any existing upscaler how does this compare and fare with that i hope this video was helpful to you in learning how you can upscale your stable diffusion images using a new latent upscaler that's quite fast if you have any questions let me know in the comment section otherwise see you in the next video